Mr. Turkish, the reason why I've invited you representing an opposition party in Turkey is mainly because I fear that in Turkey you are not allowed to be interviewed or at least the interviews to be published. Am I right? Limited, let's say. Still, uh, we have the limited options. Uh, not all the media, uh, but uh, just, uh, let's say, a couple of groups or uh, televisions or newspapers. Well, some also interview, but uh, it isn't published. How is it to be an opposition politician in Turkey? Well, generally speaking, uh, this is not the first time <laughs> that I'm in the opposition, but... Generally speaking, uh, we were practicing full-fledged democracy and, uh, well, of course, the uh, governing uh, party, uh, the government has vast options, but still you would have the platforms to talk. Another thing, this is very interesting, I would like to talk about this. Before the AK Party governments, we had... Uh, all members of different parties in the studios and discussing issues. Now, somewhat, uh, starting from when they came into office after 2002, neither the prime minister doesn't have an open discussion with the other leaders, nor the members of AK Party uh, par parliamentarians They don't go to uh, discussions on the media with the opposition. So if a television calls you, you know that first they will take an AK Party member of parliament, 15 minutes, half an hour, and then they let him go, and then they take you to the studio. In which way do you think um, the common Turk is looking about the idea of access to the European Union? Every day it's losing support. Uh, the hope is fading. You know, uh, let's say a 10 or 15 years ago when people were talking about this to be a part of the EU, uh, we had a vast majority, but uh, in nowadays it's like a joke, you know. So when we enter the EU, ha, ha, ha. That's the status now, generally. What is your opinion about the entrance of uh, Turkey to the Union? Well, I, I see, apart from the Turkish and uh, EU relations, I, I see other problems in the EU, EU itself. You know, it's not the Turkish-EU uh, relations which is at risk, but will there be a united Europe? 10 years or 20 years, you know, we have been waiting in the door for the past 50 years now. So let's say that we have the stamina and we have the patience to wait for another 50 years. Will there be a EU after 20 years or 30 years or 50 no, years? No. You know? Well, <laughs> I'm saying this, you know, this is not because I'm a politician and I want to say fancy things, but the most important thing is that Uh, you, you, when first, when EU was formed, there were strong leadership in every country and they had the philosophy, they had a projection, they had a future plan of a combined uh, EU. First it was the European Economic Community and then it was a single Europe And even in the recent times when they were going to a single currency and so, there was the leadership over there. But when you look at, uh, you know, uh, I, I won't say uh, bad things about the le current leaders, but the case is that when you take every country in its own and when you look at the leaders over there, uh, you don't see the similar uh, position that their, uh, the previous leaders of those countries had. But when you entered uh, the, the, uh, the timetable which was set up uh, for the negotiation, um, you saw a lot of investments coming to Turkey. You, and that was one of the reasons why 
um, people were eager to to have this start of negotiations. Well, uh, we had the losses also. The 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 customs union uh, g- gave a big deficit also. Yeah, but you must agree that there came a lot um, interest in your country because you are a big market with more yes, than yes, seventy of course, of course. million uh, people. Seven, seven, um, yes. Do you feel or do you look forward to um, a possible reaction of Turkey that it might turn to the uh, Muslim world, the uh, former Soviet Union uh, countries uh, which are Muslim, um, instead of having a market well, in the West? No, it's not the case of uh, Christianity or the Muslim world. It's the case that uh, in the 21st century, what are the uh, contemporary values and uh, what we generally were seeking after were these core values like the freedom of speech, uh, the rule of law, democracy and everything. So those were the things that we were seeking, of course, as well as business, trade, investments, exports. Uh, but. Uh, now, uh, you, you know, it's it was like a benchmark for the Turkish population, the uh, the values of, that EU set forth. Uh, but uh, in nowadays, uh, we feel like those values aren't also practiced very well in the EU. That, that's. That, that's the problems that we are encountering. You know, before we had some uh, faults and we had the homework to be done. But you're you're living here in um, in the Council uh, of Europe as a full member, even a yes. founding member of the uh, Council of Europe. Yes. Um, you are meeting with people from all those countries who are opposing you to become member of the other family, which is already within yes. the number of uh, mm. <laughs> Council of Europe states. But how do you how do you talk to those people? What what are your discussions about? The EU or simply, which could be difficult enough, the matters of the Council of Europe? Well, I, EU is uh, still uh, in our objective as Turkey, but... Uh, I always uh, make give this example to my friends over here. If you can't keep Belgium intact, the, the EU will not have a future. You know, w- with also the single currency, uh, they encountered problem. It was obvious. You know, like twenty uh, six countries, and they all have different. Uh, inclination of expenditures, savings, work ethics, and so, and different central banks uh, handing out the single currency. It, it was obvious that they were going to get into trouble someday, and that that is what has happened. So they have to solve these. So you don't mean that the euro is a strong currency? It's still, but it should be stronger. But uh, with the recent uh, problems with Portugal, Ireland, Greece, Spain, and so, uh, they are uh, encountering a lot of problems. That is perhaps my um, my suggestion, not linked to the currency, but the way people act with that currency. No, but if it was different currencies, then they wouldn't suffer that much. But, well, that's an economic, financial um, discussion. But yes. anyway, the, the way Turkey is acting at the moment is um, giving a lot of various to, to people around. Um, you were asked to at least fulfill the Copenhagen criteria with all what that mm-hmm. takes, human rights issues, economic reforms, and so on. At the beginning, uh, after um, the negotiation started, um, reform after reform was adapted by the Grand Chamber in Ankara. Hmm. Then it slowed down, and it seems nothing is going on. Am I right? Well, no. When you look behind the scenes, uh, there are uh, different discussions going on. Which scenes? <laughs> <laughs> the general uh, accession <laughs> dialogue, let's say, uh, because um, the the thing is that 
first, we had a lot of homework. But I admit that. And we have done those. Now, there are sometimes uh, some problems which we don't believe that those are realist, but they are made up to keep us away. Now, uh, on the unofficial talks, they say, well, you are a huge country with 76 million. Look now, when we applied in 1959, there was the demographic projection that we were going to come over here. And some even say uh, that, uh, you know, 99% of your population is Muslim. Well, we weren't in a different religion when we applied in 1959. They should have thought about this. Now, making up different uh, cases and making up uh, some problems which actually don't exist to keep us away. You know, there are the new applicants because of their population or because of the, the their demography's uh, beliefs and so, they can easily be a part of EU. But Turkey, being 76, 77 million population and 99% uh, Muslim, now some people are having second thoughts about it because there is the... Uh, xenophobic waves which is affecting some local politicians in Europe. Uh, uh, we have to be frank about this and we have to talk openly about this because there is a rise in most of the countries which is actually a threat to Europe itself. Uh, one of the demands, what could you call it, on you has been solve the Cyprus problem. Will you? Can you? Well, first, you have to set the problem right to solve the problem. If you don't set the problem properly, then you can never solve that you problem. By who? You. Is it you in no, the no, Turkey? You, you, you who in general, you whoever watches us. <laughs> so, uh, when we are talking about Cyprus, when you accept the Greeks as the rightful ones and think about... Are you by the, purpose saying the Greeks? The Greek you mean Cypriots. The, okay. the Greek Cypriots What's and the, Gre the Greeks. Greeks behind the scenes, let's say. Uh, the, the real owners and that they have every night right by all means to accept or keep you out of this situation, you start with the wrong foot. So you have to start with the uh, right foot to have a good dance over there. And it takes two to tango. You have to understand this. You know, apart from this, uh, when you look at the Cyprus situation, the two communities were over there for decades, for hundreds of years now. So uh, when you accept one's declarations as the sole truth and the others, you know, a couple of years ago, we had Mr. Christofias, the uh, previous president of uh, Cyprus, Greek Cypriot, Cypriot part. He made a wonderful speech over here in the Council of Europe, and everybody applauded. And he said, we are free, our borders are open, and our Turkish uh, compatriots can come export their products from our... Uh, ports and so and everybody said you know they were looking at us and saying what don't you accept but they didn't know that a Turkish lorry with a Turkish license plate was not allowed to pass to the Greek Cypriot part and when a Turk Turkish Cypriot uh, was trying to export a product the port fares were three times higher than a Greek Cypriot would be charged for. So, uh, of course, it's open, but the case when you're trying to make an export is you have to build a price. You are not very optimistic, are you, about the Cyprus, solving well, the Cyprus problem? Well, uh, the, the case is that uh, we uh, regard uh, Mr. Uh, Ban Ki-moon's recent attempt as a positive one you know, to solve the case 
in a time frame. And so Mr. it's... Turkish, I've heard all secretary generals of the United Nations no, coming but, up. Uh, he is now, uh, he, he is saying that it's a, it's a final thrust on a time frame. Okay. But the case is that the Greek Cypriots are very reluctant in doing this. So, uh, you know, not only putting a pressure over Turkey or the Turkish Cypriots, but uh, the Western world, the EU, uh, United States, United Kingdom, whoever is involved to solve the uh, East Mediterranean problem. It's not only a Turkish and Greek But problem. When you're talking about the area, um, there is the challenge in who is to pick up the um, the gas um, in the um, in the ground under the Mediterranean in the area of yeah, well, uh, Cyprus. Picking up the ga gas won't solve your problem. You have to transfer it to the west, exactly. and the best calm place is to do it over Turkey. So yes. everybody has to take this into consideration. So you don't foresee there will be any no, problems? Well, well, they have to put the same similar pressure, not more, but not less, over Greece and the Greek Cypriots. That's what I'm saying.